And good morning also to all of you who are online this morning. So glad that you're here. So good morning. My name is Pat Syfax and I am the Sunday School Director here at New Testament Church. So today our Sunday School teacher will be Deacon, our very own Deacon Kevin Scroggins. He is going to be bringing, and of course uh, the topic is so timely, we're talking about uh, hearing songs of, about a fight, and his title is Fighting a Good Fight of Faith, 1 Timothy 6, chapter 6, verses three, 6 through 12. So I just want to remind you that if you want to participate, which we want you to, be sure to just raise your hand. We'll come around with the mic, keep your mask on. Um, we'll be holding the mic so that we're not transmitting it um, from hand to hand. And then those of you who are online, we will, um, you can put your questions and comments in the chat and then I'll read them uh, for you. I'd like to mention today's or this week's memory verse is Proverbs 16, 18, and it reads, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And then also the book for this month is Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. Our speaker for next week will be Minister Darian Luckett. So we look forward to seeing him or hearing him as well. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to our Deacon Kevin Scroggins. Good morning, church. It is good to be here, and um, my topic on, well, let me first start by prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you that you are in charge, Father God. So as I speak, grant me the grace to decrease, that you increase, that I would speak the things that you want said not on my own power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within me. Hide me, Lord. I pray that you would be glorified and that your people will be edified. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Fighting the good fight of faith. Um, this has been one of the most challenging topics that I've ever had to teach on and I've done um, new members class and I've had a couple of occasions I, I taught the last time and uh, about the mercy of God but this was the most challenging challenging because of me challenging because of what I was talking about I have faced uh, many oppositions in this but if you're going to talk about something and you're going to talk about God, you have to understand that you are going to be challenged. And that's why it's called the good fight of faith. But now, in order for you to have a good fight, foundationally there are two scriptures that we need to know. First, Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then you will have, then your way will be prosperous, and then you will have good success. Secondly, third Tim, uh, First Timothy three, verses Second uh, Timothy three, verses sixteen through seventeen. All Scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. This book. And I said, Lord, I'm struggling. This book. Lord, I'm in a fight this book. Meditate day and night. Read my word. Study my word. Believe my word. He says in James 1.22, be doers of the word 
not just to hear, deceiving yourself, like a man who beholds himself in a mirror and when he walks away, he forgets what he looks like. And I had an image of that, and I don't know if it's proper to say this, but I'm gonna say it. Pastor Moan always said, you can do whatever you want to once. And so I'm gonna burn mine up right now. <laughs> Imagine looking in the mirror and having something in your nose. I won't say the word, you guys know what it is. And not just a small one, but a big one. And you walk and you see it in the mirror and rather than getting a tissue and removing it, you walk away and you get into someone's face and you say, praise the Lord and how you doing? Did you see the game last night? And you got this big thing in your nose. So when we go into God's word, we have to believe it. And all that we need is in this book. And so now I am going to have the scripture read by my queen, Rita Scroggins. But they, will, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. But the love of money is the root of all evil which will some covet after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, Flee these things and follow all righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and haste profess the good profession before many witnesses. 1 Timothy 6, King James. Money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Not, and some may use that. Uh, some people who don't want to work may say, hey, look, the Bible clearly states that the love of money is the root of all evil, so I ain't going to work because I can't get no money. But he also says, if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. And so you have, we have to be able to uh, fight off Satan with Scripture. And uh, when Jesus came out of the wilderness... He fought off Satan with scripture. And we have to know that our fight is internal and external. We have a fight within ourselves that says all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And we are fighting those fights every single day. We have a hard time sometimes and just get, we get up in the morning. We should be able to just say, thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Lord, that you woke me up. Thank you that I have a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, that I have heat or, uh, or air conditioning on. Thank you, Lord, for the food in my refrigerator. Thank you that you, you blessed me to see another day. When I wake up and I see this queen next to me every day, thank you, Lord, that you gave me a queen. 35 years we will be married in July. Thank you, Lord, because it didn't have to be that way. There are some things that took place uh, in the course of our marriage that uh, could have easily uh, ended it. But God, who was rich in mercy, he did said it wouldn't be so. He said, no, you're going you're gonna to marry this woman, He's gonna, and you're going to love her. And how are you supposed to love her? I got it in this book. Love your wives as Christ loved the church, and he gave himself for her. How did he give himself? How did he give himself for us? Sacrificially, unconditionally, and continuous. He who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so we are blessed every day. 
I want to make a, give a quote uh, of my aunt, my great aunt who's passed on. But she said something that uh, basically justifies the, uh, this book. Says you can't teach what you don't know and you can't lead where you won't go. So how am I to know where God wants me to go if I'm not in this book? How do I know where to go if I'm not in this book? Because the word says, pray without ceasing. And so in our prayer, we are talking to God. And in his word, he is talking to us. And if you don't know the word, you say, it is no excuse to say, well, you know, I don't understand Greek and Hebrew. I don't either. Pastor Malone is a very gifted man when it comes to the word of God. And I can appreciate him so much in the way he teaches. But you don't have to know Greek and Hebrew to obey God. You just have to get in the book. And so that's how we fight the good fight of faith. We don't fight because of our faith. We, we don't fight for our faith. We fight because of our faith. He who has begun a good work in you will perform it into the day of Jesus Christ. How do you know what the work is unless you are in this book? And so the church in Corinthians, in Corinth, that Paul established in the 18th chapter of Acts, they got involved in the world. First, let me just give you a little backdrop on the church in Corinth. It was kind of like a New York. It had shipping ports. It was a prosperous city. It had everything. People were thriving. The economy was thriving. And then the people of God got involved in those people. And so instead of them being like the Bible says, we are supposed to be a city on a hill that's light. We are supposed to be salt. They became intermingled in the culture of the, Corinth, the, 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 the city of Corinth. And so being involved in the city of Corinth, they started to take up on their ways and they, uh, heresies were created. If you look, uh, we, every week we, in 1 Corinthians uh, 11, he talks about the, uh, the Lord's Supper. And they were taking it uh, in the wrong manner. And many died. Many got sick. Verse, uh, chapter 12, uh, they had arguments about uh, the, the, the speaking in tongues and different gifts. And they started to mix God with the human uh, understanding of man. And it got all mixed up. And in today's environment, it is very easy to get involved with today's society. And how do we get involved with today's society? Television, coworkers, gossip. We, we, these are just little scenes. Everyone knows Michael Jackson, correct? I mean, very popular star. Michael had a a pet called Bubbles. Anybody remember Bubbles? Bubbles was a little, cute little monkey. As much as he was ugly, he was cute. And Michael had this pet, and he just carried it around. And I don't know if anybody ever told Michael about what this pet can do and what he's capable of doing, and that he wasn't always going to be small and cute, and that he was going to grow, and he was going to be uh, 185 pounds, and he was, going to be, he was going to do what chimpanzees do. They're very strong. They're very aggressive. When we all have some kind of little pet little chimpanzee, something that we just, a little secret sin, and we just keep it right here. And nobody knows. But this book says the, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And so our pet monkeys turn into a gorilla. And then we wonder, how did we get here? And then Galatians 6, 7 said, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Good fight. And how do we fight the good fight? 
First of all, we have to understand it is by grace that we are saved through faith, and that, that, that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. We sometimes think that uh, just faith alone is going to do it without any works. James is not uh, disputing Paul, but what James is bringing out in J James 2, and we will look at verses, random verses in 2, 14, 17, what he is saying that is a work is required on our part. We can't just say I'm saved and and I'm, I'm good. I got my salvation. Yeah, by grace I'm saved through faith and is the gift of God lest any man boast. God gave us something that we didn't deserve. While we were yet sinners, God, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. And so as we fight this good fight of faith, we have to understand that there are some truths and there are some things that we have to do and we cannot put it on automatic pilot. We cannot just say, uh, I'm saved, I got, my, I got my salvation, and you get yours. That is a wicked way of thinking. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17, 9. James says, what doeth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and not works? Can faith save him? Even so, if it hath not works, it is dead alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. But wilt thou, O man, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Seest thou how faith wrought with its, this works, and by works was faith made perfect? Verse 24. Ye see then how by by works, a man is justified and not by faith only. It requires some work on our part. When uh, Paul sent Timothy out on this mission to Ephesus, it was much like uh, Corinth. And there were many uh, false uh, uh, religions, uh, false narratives, and we call them uh, heresies. And so when he sent them out and he said this was to be a good fight, what does it mean to have a good fight? The word good means distinguished. Our fight is not like a fight that, you know, we see fighting on TV, NMA fighting and regular fighting. You know, everybody knows Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson and so of sorts. But this fight is good. It's, it's distinguished for the edification of people from God. And how do, we find, how do we find that? We find it in this book. The word fight is a Greek word meaning to struggle, to contend with an adversary, to endeavor to accomplish something. It is a command not a suggestion. It is in an imperative mood. The word faith, in short, means the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. Any questions? This is Sunday school. I'm sorry if I gave a different impression, but it is Sunday school, so you can ask questions. If not, I'll keep going. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was up on him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All of we, like sheep, have gone astray, and we have turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Brothers and sisters, if, if we don't have any other reason to raise our hands. And if you can't raise your hands, you can stomp your feet. If you don't have any other reason to, you know, forever is a long time. And I had heard this, that how long is forever? And an example that was given to me is if you take a, a ball the size of this earth and this 
A bird has to come once a year to sharpen his beak. And by the time that ball gets to the size of a BB, that's how long forever is. And so we have been delivered from the bad news. And you know if there is bad news or if there's good news, the gospel is the good news, but there's also got to be a bad news. For the wages of sin is death. That's, that's the bad news. Good news. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There were two deacons, and they loved baseball. They loved, they, they loved the Lord, but their, their pastime outside of the church and outside of ministry was baseball. And one day they were walking along, and they said, hey, look. If one of us goes before the other one and the Lord allows you to come back, you got to come back and let us know if there's baseball in heaven. And so one day, one of the, friend, one of the deacons passed away, and the other deacon was sitting on the side of his bed after the funeral. Poof, here comes the other deacon. And he said, hey, I knew you would come back. I knew you would come back. He said, I got to know, I got to know, I got to know. Is there baseball in heaven? He said, I got good news and I got bad news. He said, the good news is there's baseball in heaven. He said, yes, 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 yes. He said, well, what's the bad news? He said, you're up to pitch day after tomorrow. <laughs> How do we fight? Finally, my brother, Ephesians 16, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I like to zero in as it gives the uh, weapons that we are to fight with in Ephesians 6. But I like to zero in on two of the weapons. Now, they are all important in our, in, in our fight. But I like to zero in on two. The shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. Just imagine this shield to fight off the fiery darts of the devil. Because we are depraved in nature. Sometimes you may want to return the favor when you're driving and someone like Pastor Mon said tell you that you're number one. Scripture says, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you and tell you that you're number one. Love those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute you. How do you, how do you, how do, you do that? Well, first of all, by grace through faith are you saved, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. And then you have to understand that once we're saved, we have the Holy Spirit working on the inside of us to help us fight this good fight. We have, he said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You have everything you need in this book to fight the good fight of faith. And so we're either blocking or stabbing. And stabbing is using the word of God. And, and, and it's a, a specific word depending on your situation. And so when you get into situations in life, and if, and you know, the Bible says in, in we are to study to show that self approved A workman not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when Satan comes along with his lies, you can identify it immediately. Fighting the good fight of faith. And without this, can you imagine going into a ring, you got your trunks on, it says Everlast in the front. You got your boxing gloves on. You got everything on. And you're going into the ring with Mike Tyson. And you say, well, I'm ready because I got, I got everything on. I, I, I got the pants on. I got the trunks on. I got the shoes on. I'm, I'm geared up. But, but you haven't been in this book. You, haven't, you don't have a corner man. 
You don't have a trainer. You have not been running the race. You have not been running those miles that are necessary in order for you to be able to, to sustain all the rigorous uh, 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 parts of the fight. And so you have to be in this book. You have to have God's sword, the word of God. You have to be able to block some stuff. And let me just say this. Sometimes Satan gets one through. Sometimes he gets one through. But you don't have to fret. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, th that ain't for everybody. If you don't know God, that ain't for you. He said, if you walk in darkness, if you say you have fellowship with him and you walk in darkness, this is 1 Timothy, uh, I believe, I'm, I'm sorry, 1 John uh, 1, 3. If you say you have fellowship with him and you walk in darkness, you do not know the truth. You do not know the truth. And it goes on to say that, but if you walk in the light, for he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Fellowship. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin if we have fellowship with him. This is a point where I say, if you don't know Christ, get to know him. If he's knocking at the door of your heart, get to know him. Uh, you, no matter what sin you have committed, Paul was a murderer, and God got glory out of Paul's life. And then at the end of his life, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. He stayed in his lane. I have kept the faith of this book. So if we're going to fight the good fight of faith, we have to know that we have weapons that we can use. Can you guys hear me? And so we have the weapon, which is the word of God, and we have our faith that he gave us upon our salvation, and it wasn't anything that we deserve, and we can block the fiery darts of the devil. Arnold? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Second uh, Corinthians 10, three through five, uh, King James Version. That is so powerful as we uh, fight the good fight of faith, uh, casting down imaginations. You know, if, if, if we're not in this book, and, and you know, look, we all sometimes drift and, and Satan uh, gets us into a position to where we are uh, not even thinking about the Word of God. We're, we're, we're getting our theology from someone other than the book. And how this happens, how this happens, I did some studying about um, just the psychological effects of commercials. And Proverbs 4.20 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. And in my study, it just, and this is just brief, it, you know, the psychology of just a commercial. Now, this last year's Super Bowl, and this blew my mind, it may not blew yours, I, I just don't have this kind of money sitting aside. 
$6.5 million for a 30-minute commercial. Now, why would anybody pay anybody $6.5 million for 30 minutes of a commercial? Well, there's a reason for that. Every company that advertises revenue for the next two weeks increase 10 to 15 percent per person. Per person, the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, you don't know because the commercials are seem cute and all that kind of stuff. In fact, some of the commercials are so effective, you don't even look at the product, you just look at what's, what's being said. One call, that's all. And we'll use that as a verbiage in various conversations. One call, that's all. And, and I was kind of disturbed at that commercial because they, Use this girl to say, and you know, they, they told me that it's not going to cost me anything. And I said, it's not going to cost me anything. No, it's not going to cost you anything. Newsflash. That's called contingency. All of them, all of them work on a contingency basis. So one call, that's all, whether you go to him or go to somebody else. They all work on a contingency basis. But, 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 but the psychology of the commercial, it says, how advertising is a mind game. Advertising manipulates you because it influences your, and this is the part that got me. It influences your subconscious by filtering the local mind that protects the brain regions responsible for faith. Advertising has a big impact on social learning. It introduces models, defines trends, creates traditions. And so you say, how harmful can it be for me to watch these commercials? Oscar, I, I'm, I'm just for one minute, you don't have to forgive me. Some people go out and buy a car based on a commercial. And then there's not, I mean, not Oscar, but people I know <laughs> will talk you into buying something that you can't even afford based on you watching a commercial, the psychology of the commercial. See, see the commercials are not just a group of, uh, of marketing people sitting there. They have professional, clinical psychologists sitting there trying to figure out how they can produce, or how they can promote their product, and not only promote it, to get you to come out of your pocket. And they could care less if you're broke after you buy that product. But like I said, that's not Oscar. That's just people I know. And so we go out and we buy things that we don't, we can't afford, or that we don't need. See, we, we are, you know, the Bible says we are stewards. He gives us money not to let it be um, our God, which in verse 10 of this, of this study shows that we are not to be lovers of money. We are not to let it be our God. There are relationships, and Pastor cited it this morning, marriages where it would have been the right person, but because someone said they don't make enough money, and that person could have been happy for the rest of their life because the love of money is the root of all evil. And so they could have been happy the rest of their life. Or, on the contrary, somebody marries somebody because of money. Oh, he's got this and he's got that. He's got a boat. He's got another house down in Florida. He's got one out in California. Or she. And then we get caught up in the money. And then we forget all about God. And I'm, talk I'm not talking about worldly people. I'm talking about us. I mean, worldly people do what worldly people do. But I'm talking about us. And so we watch these commercials and we get manipulated. TV shows. It should hurt our hearts to see the violence, the same-sex stuff on television. That should hurt our hearts because it's contrary to God's teaching. That should hurt our hearts. But yet, when we can see a good shoot 'em up. If if, it's, if 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 that movie, we we will base a movie based on how much blood we see. We will base a movie by, I'm just keeping it real, 
What do the, what do the sex scenes look like? I'm talking about Christian folks. I'm talking about us. Those little secret sins that we have. Uh, those little, you know, now you can pick up your phone and you can pretty much see anything you want to see. We are in a battle, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. We are in a battle. Uh, Pastor Malone right now is preaching in uh, 2 Timothy 3 about in the last days, the days of Jesus Christ and all the things that we're coming up against. And uh, it's, it's, it's frightening when a, when a man can go into a church and because he's at odds with his his children's mother and he had they had a chaperone and he shoots the chaperone and it's three girls I have one girl I can't admit look my daughter she tells you she has more than three whooping she she's really exaggerating not that she didn't need it but I just I can't imagine a person going into a church three shooting his own flesh and blood just to get back at her because they have a bad relationship. I can't imagine uh, someone getting involved and in doing drugs and then cutting off a man's head and putting it in a, in a pail. I can't imagine that. But the book says, this book says that in the last days, this stuff is going to happen. So we as Christians, we have to be on guard. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, seeking he may devour, and he doesn't care who he uses. If Satan can go into the garden and fool, deceive Eve, Adam wasn't deceived. If Satan can, can, can test Jesus after coming out of the wilderness, you have to know that you are being tested. Every single day. Prayer. 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 Fasting. Giving time to God. We cannot fight this good fight of faith alone. Another thing about commercials. One question? Question. I was reading an article um, a couple of weeks ago, and it was about a, it was a child actor. He's, he's an adult now, but he was an actor, and if I were to call his name, everyone would know him. But as he got older and growing in faith, he no longer got offered the Hollywood role because of his faith. Amen. And that's, that's one of the things that, that, that's fighting a good fight. Because, you know, I mean, he, he's married whenever he, even, even in the Christian films that he does, if there's any type of romantic scenes, he wants that stand in to be his wife. And in reading the article, I was looking at it from, you know, I could see that the, the writer was looking at a different viewpoint where he was saying, like, this person is difficult because... He's putting all these extra things into that because he doesn't want to kiss somebody who isn't his wife. And I, you know, and, and I know that the, the article was supposed to be talking about this person, and it seemed like it was a positive thing. But then the little, you know, when you kind of the nuances that you you see in there, Amen. it was like it was making him seem like that's why he's not getting these jobs because he 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 says I have to do this. You know, my wife has to be a stand-in or whatever it is, you know. So that's a part of that good fight. We need to make sure that we understand how Satan comes at us. And so how we may start out in the business. And it could be happening in our own work situations. We should not compromise. Amen. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. But God wants me to be happy. Happiness is a, a series of emotions. Sometimes you're just not happy. But 
the joy of the Lord is your strength. And it is not predicated on the situations that are happening around you. Presenting yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, may cost you something. It may cost you a paycheck. It may cost you a relationship. But when we are in Christ, we are a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are new. And it, nothing, nothing is more important in my relationship with God because of the good news that when I die, I will be absent from this body and present with the Lord. And I just can't help but think about my brother Bobby. Bobby taught me how to be a servant. Bobby taught me a lot about people as well as myself. Bobby was a man that fought the good fight of faith. And if you ever want to question what does that look like, if you know Bobby, think about Bobby. The last time I presented Bobby opened up in prayer for me. And I was led by the Holy Spirit to have him to um, pray, uh, to open up in prayer. And I just find that it's ironic that, you know, the, the day before I present again, Bobby has gone on to be with the Lord. But the one comforting thing that I have is to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And you know what? I used, to, I used to fear dying. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And when he tells us, he gives us the great commission and says, Go ye therefore into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And he said, Lo, I will be with you until the end of the age. He will not leave you or forsake you. And so if you have a fear of ministering or, or to, to, to talk to someone, at your, whether it be at your job or whether it be in the line at a grocery store and tell them about Jesus, that didn't come from God. That fear didn't come from God. The fear and the reverence that we have for God is different than the fear that we have because of we don't think we're adequate. That's why it's so important to meditate on this book. And so uh, when I think about Bobby, I just think of him as a good soldier. You know the song we used to sing when we were in church, we were little kids. We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight, we have to fight, we have to hold up the blood-stained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. And so in order to do that, we have to fight the good fight of faith. 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Psychologists, tactics, marketers used to influence consumer run emotional ideas. Studies have shown that emotional and psychological appeals resonate more with consumers than feature and function appeals. It highlights our flaws. It repositions their competition, has nothing to do with you. Promotes exclusivity, one call, that's all. Introduces fear, uncertainty, and doubt. More so than the product itself. So we attach ourselves to make ourselves be um, counted worthy of the world but be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind how do we renew our mind this book and so uh, we have to understand there's no place that Satan won't go our fighting is both internal and external Genesis 2.16, God is talking here to Adam. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden mayest thou freely eat. Verse 17, 
But the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. How many of you know uh, when, this, when it opens up, it says that Satan is crafty. That means that he has been studying you all of your life. He knows your tendencies. He knows your likes, your dislikes. He knows all about that little pet monkey that you have. And so he goes, he didn't go to the man, he goes to the lady. And he told, how many of you know that uh, partial truth is a lie? So, so, so he, he tells her, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye should not surely die. Verse 5, for God doeth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Understand this. The Bible says have no confidence in the flesh. None. None. But when we are in the world and we, we kind of like, you know, saying, okay, I'm saved and, and so by grace I'm saved through faith and so I ain't going to be perfect and I'm not going to be all that. So let me, let, me just get a li- let me just get a little bit of the world just so I can please that, that whatever that is. Scripture says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And so she, you, we have to realize that we are depraved which means we are morally corrupt and wicked. Here comes the sin. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her. Now, the, 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 and, and he, did, he ate too. Now, God gave the message to him. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a command. So the only way she got it, because she wasn't born, she was created. And she was created for him. So she knew from him that it wasn't to be eaten. But she compromised. And she said, and, and here, the, the part that still gets me in, Maybe I need to do some more studying on this. He was, he was right there. What, man, look, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm getting ready to get away from the message real quick. Can't no man talk to my wife and tell her something against what's in my house. Nobody. I don't care if it's a commercial. I don't care if it's a program. And, and that's why we have to guard our hearts with all diligence. Because sooner or later we start to compromise and we start to jostle between what's true and what's not true and then we kind of mix it up and then we create our own heresies in, in our life. So here it is, Satan is letting this subtle creature talk to his Satan, talk to his wife and tell her, talk against what God told him and he ate it. He said, there, and then verse 23, therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden. I'm sorry, let me back up. Um, uh, oh, verse 22, 322. So Satan told a partial truth. In the partial truth, he says, verse 22, and the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil, and now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Verse 23, therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. There is no place that Satan won't go, and there's no one that he won't tempt, and we are, none of us are exempt. From temptation. And then as we talk about the internal war, we are depraved. John 1, 2, 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man the love loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. It is, it's the same thing that Satan tried to do to Jesus when he came. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And you'll find that in uh, Matthew 4.4 4, as well as Luke 4.4. 4. James, let no man say when he is tempted. I am tempted of God, for God cannot be, cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. Verse 14, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. I said I was only going to burn up one of them because I only got one, but I'm going to do this one anyway. And so, 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 so one day, just, just, just kind of work with me here. They walk into the church one day, and Satan is sitting on the steps, and he's crying. And somebody walked up to him and said, Satan, why are you crying? He said, those folks in there are lying on me. He said, lying on you, Satan? You, the biggest liar of all? He said, yeah, they lying on me. He said, well, how are they lying on you? He said, they saying that I'm, he, I'm making them do everything. He said, only thing I do is provide the temptation. That's what Satan does. He provides the temptation. He knows your wants. He knows your desires. He knows your cravings. He knows, he knew you before you were saved. He knew your tendencies. And he is never going to change his methods. Like it was told to me one day, if he can fake you with the left and go right, why, why, why would he ever change? Because it always works. So I'm going to conclude this, and if we have any questions, we can, um, I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. But I uh, just wanted to say what God wanted me to say and nothing more and nothing less. In the conclusion, when it's all said and done, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 2, 4, and 7, and verse 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Any questions? No questions? Let us close out in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this gift of another day. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for this book. We pray, Lord, that you would give us the grace, Lord, to uh, come to you in all things, that, that we would love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. And we will love our neighbors as ourselves. And that we would fight the good fight of faith, taking you with us every step of the way through prayer and reading and meditation, Father God, on your word. I pray for all these people, uh, your people, Father God, within the sound of my voice. I pray that they would be edified, but most of all, Lord, that you be glorified. You said whatever we, we eat or drink, whatever we do, we do it to the glory of God. So we thank you, Lord, for this day, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that a good word? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I almost said minister. <clears throat> Let's uh, finish and close up with the benediction. If you will stand with me. You guys get a chance to have the benediction twice in the day. Isn't that a beautiful thing? All right. If you just stretch your hands up to heaven with me. 
je va gretika erfnai de hismerika ja erfnai panal elekha de khim yesa elenai panal elekha alasin elekha shalom the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace amen you are dismissed